So the first time I ever encountered this technique was about a year ago. My buddy and I were just playing some friendlies when I accidentally did what appeared to be an instant ledge get up into a forward tilt with Lucina. Ever since then, I've had a pretty hard time replicating it until just recently. So at long last, here's my tutorial on probably the hardest technique in Smash 4. I'll cover how to do it along with its applications. One side of the level to tilt up all the way, then grab the ledge. It can be either side as long as it's tilted up. Hit back to drop off the ledge, and within 3 to 5 frames after, hit forward, then within 1 to 2 frames, hit jump. If successful, Lucina's jump will be cancelled, and she'll land on the stage with no lag. You can be off a little bit on the timing on Lilat and still get it, but on other stationary stages like Battlefield, it requires much more precise timing. The traditional method of dash dancing, as you may know, still works here, but because you must change directions within only a few frames of the dash animation, it isn't as useful. What I want to focus on is what is known as extended dash dancing, or dance trotting, and its applications. The first thing you need to know is how to foxtrot, which you do by simply inputting a short dash in one direction, and as that animation ends, input another dash, so on and so forth. As for the extended dash dance, simply foxtrot in one direction, wait for the foxtrot animation to end, then hit your joystick in the same direction, then immediately hit the opposite direction. Let me ask you, do you miss wave dashing? Well, this is probably the closest thing to it in Smash 4. I'm gonna tell you guys everything about perfect pivoting, how to do it, and how it can be used in battle. The inputs for this technique are pretty straightforward. All you have to do is dash in one direction, then instantly flick the control stick in the opposite direction. Though when I say flick, I mean flick. When you first try this, you might accidentally do an on-spot dash. This means your flick in the opposite direction is held for too long. It'll definitely take some practice, but once you get the timing down, it'll become second nature. Perfect pivoting into jabs can be a safe and quick way to catch incoming opponents. If you change your C-stick to tilt instead of smash tags, you'll even be able to perfect pivot into tilts, essentially sliding tilts. Same goes for smash tags. The effect is very similar to wave dashing into attacks in melee. Another interesting use is perfect pivoting into back airs. Normally, you'd have to dash, turn around, then throw out the move. Now you have a faster alternative. So far so good, right? Well, I'm not done. There's perfect pivot grabbing, which is a much faster version of reverse grabbing. And of course, special moves can be used with tech as well. Before anything, let's take a look at the character animations when they're hanging on a ledge. As you can see, everyone is different. Characters like Bowser Jr., Olimar, and Charizard have their head peeking above the ledge, which makes them vulnerable not only to low attacks, but also horizontal attacks. On the other hand of the spectrum, there are a few characters like Ganondorf, Palutena, and Greninja that are immune to more attacks, because only a tiny amount of their hurt box reaches above the ledge. So with that said, let's talk about punishes. Down smash is of course a common one that works for a majority of the cast, but what about other attacks? Surprisingly, Mario's up tilt works. Awesome part is that it can act as a combo starter as well. Some other moves that have this ability are Pikachu's up tilt, Dr. Mario's down tilt, Little Max's down tilt, Toon Link's up tilt, and Fox's up tilt. However, at kill percents, it's best to throw out your strongest attack to finish them off. Today I'm going to teach you guys a useful technique called Jump Cancel Fly Topsy, or Jump Cancel To fly toss backwards, hit backward, then jump, then instantly hit forward and A. Same idea with fly tossing downwards and upwards. Okay, so now that you know how to do it, let's get on with the fun part. First off, Mega Man. Mega Man! Mega Man! The Super Fighting Robot! Oh, wait! Oh, oh, he got one! He got one! Glytos down throwing his blade, then immediately picking it up and repeating, you can literally slide across the stage. I highly recommend using the second method to do this, it's much easier in my opinion. 
the best part is if you do it fast enough, you can actually combo the opponent across the stage. I've tested this with my friend and during certain percentages, it's actually inescapable. We chose a few characters from different weight classes to see. For example, on a heavy character like DK, it's a true combo from 5 to 60%. On a midweight character like Ness, 0 to 30%. And on a floaty like Jigglypuff, about 0 to 15%. So I came across this interesting technique while testing out B-reversals, what I'd like to call B-reverse slide cancel, start by dashing. Step 2, do a grounded B-reversal with Sheik's needles. If you don't know how to do this, at the end of your dash, release the circle pad, then press B or whatever your special is mapped to, and immediately hit the circle pad in the opposite direction. Step 3, cancel the needles with shield. If you hit the shield input fast enough, you won't even see the needle charge animation. However, if you want to slow it down or don't want your shield to come up afterwards, hit the shield input a tad bit later. After experimenting with this technique a lot, I find its applications are similar to dash forward and wave dash backwards in Melee. Once mastered, it definitely can be used as a good mind game tool. Just to note, it's important not to get this mixed up with perfect pivoting. They're two different things and each have their own applications. Also increase the distance of the extended dash dance a bit by holding off your second foxtrot until the very end, or shorten the distance by doing your second foxtrot as soon as possible. By switching up the timing, you can retreat while extended dash dancing. Some may ask, how is this useful? While well, similar to traditional dash dancing, the point is to play spacing mind games to confuse your opponent. All in all, this is a very versatile technique and there are many ways you can implement it into your own playstyle. Test out different combinations and see what works for you. Player 2 defeated! Congratulations! This game's winner is Kirby! I'll be showing you guys among the strongest true combos you can perform with every character in the game, utilizing a little platform mechanic. Though, what is a true combo you may ask? It's basically an inescapable combo, meaning your opponent can't vector, can't attack, can't air dodge, can't do anything. To get that said, enjoy. First off, Villager. Thanks to the pocket damage multiplier, Kirby's tree can kill Villager at any percent, and it's also an instant shield break. With that said, if you manage to pocket villager tree, you can true combo and up tilt into tree from 25% to about 100%. After about 80%, you need to jump, then release the tree. First of all, the base knock back or down throw has been decreased quite a lot as you can see. So what this allows us to do is to down throw to up B from about 0 to 10%. Here are all the characters that this works on. Against a few of them like Mario and Wario, you have to wait a split second after the down throw before hitting up B. If you can't retreat to the ledge or under a platform, you may need a small punish. Sure, this combo is easy and strong, but there's an even deadlier combo that works on a handful of the cats from about 0 to 10%, utilizing up throw into two forward airs, re grab, down throw, down air, fastball neutral air into an aerial. Let's start off with down throw. From about 0 to 10%, there's a very strong mix up combo Mennonite can do, which is a perfect pivot back air, and it'll connect no matter where they DI. Though we only want to land the first or the second hit of back air in order to spike the opponent to the ground. To do this, you must fast fall the back air after the first hit. When they land, they do have a chance to attack. But if they miss, turn around and down tilt them up to three times. After this, go for a dash tap into a short hop or forward jump up air. Then double jump up air as many times as you can into a shuttle move. This will kill if you take them high enough. Hold on MSC, what about DI? Now you're right, the opponent can DI the dash attack, as well as the up airs. But there is also enough hits done in both cases such that you can react to the DI and follow them. Though for heavy characters, the back air won't put them in trouble animation, meaning you can't lock them, but they will suffer a stunned animation for about 25 to 30 frames the moment they land, which gives you ample time for a regrab. The strongest true combo is up tilt, down tilt, strong down tilt into a true tatsu. To perform a true tatsu, hit down, back down, back, then A or B. This combo won't work on some characters since they fly too high after the strong down tilt. For them, do an up tilt, jab into a true tatsu. At kill percents, reuse true tree can finally get the time to shine. 
This move is extremely powerful, you can kill Bowser as early as 90% with no rage. There are three methods to execute it. One is to do the Z pattern motion, then hit A or B. Two is to have your joystick in the lower bottom corner, then swipe it down, then back to the lower bottom, then A or B. Three is to simply tap it in the lower bottom corner twice, then press A or B. Now let's look at the moves that can combo into a true Shoryuken. We have jab, up tilt, down tilt, and down air. Method 2 is useful when linking a down tilt with a true Shoryuken, since your joystick is already in the down position. Method 3 is useful if you don't want to move forward when doing your inputs. With that explained, at low percent, there's a plethora of things you can combo from a cargo throw. One of the best ones is cargo up throw into back air. Make sure you are jumping forward with the cargo to get a better position. Why this follow-up is good is because there's an opportunity for a second follow-up. If you predict that your opponent is gonna jump, then do another back air immediately. And if you think they're gonna air dodge, wait for it, then punish with an aerial. A down air read can lead into a spike if done near the ledge, or put them in a pretty bad situation on the stage if they miss their tech. The move that combos with rock most efficiently is a fastball up air. Why it's so good is because at higher percents, even if you can't reach the opponent with the base of your walk, you can still true combo them with Wario's headbutt for the kill. Also, the angle in which they DI the up air is rather small, and the hit stun is high, so reading it shouldn't be an issue. On balloon weights, this works from about 30 to 70 percent. On feather weights, 40 to 95 percent. On middle weights, 50 to 105 percent. On heavy weights, 50 to 110 percent. And on super heavyweights, 55 to 130 percent. Forward air can set up for a good mix-up combo at mid percents. If you do a short off forward air towards your opponent, they'll fly a short distance above the ground, being restricted to only three options upon landing: either tech away from you, tech towards you, or tech on spot. No teching is the same as teching on spot in this situation. All of these options can be punished by waft quite easily if you make one of the three correct reads. Let's switch things up a bit and see what we can do with the fight. By running towards the ledge, and the moment before you fall off, press side special and hold it towards the stage, your bike will hurl quickly in your opponent's face. If you manage to hit them at mid to high percents, you can jump off right away into a waft. The timing is a bit strict though to get your bike flying in the air like this. If you hit side special too late, your bike will just plop onto the stage. This flying bike to waft combo works on edges of platforms as well. The only way the opponent can avoid it is by preemptively DIing away. As for what I think is the most practical setup, we have neutral air. The reason for this is because the duration of the move is very long, and even better when coupled with Wario's amazing air mobility. Plus, the first hit of the move can combo into the second. So landing the second hit is what we really need here. This setup works from low to mid percents, but at low, you should probably just link with an up air. Also possible a true combo of footstool into walk. You can see a list of characters this works against in this Wario thread on Smashboards, which I'll leave in the description. And also, shoutouts to the Reflex Wonder for compiling it. Waft can also be an effective punish in defensive situations, like wafting out of your shield. If your shield gets hit by a laggy attack, or you manage to power shield an attack, simply drop your shield or jump out of your shield, then waft. If you're extremely good at smash DIing, it's also possible to smash DI out of certain multi jabs, jump out, then drop down into a walk. Well, guys, that wraps setup for today. Hope you guys found this helpful. I know this is like, what, the third Wario video? I'm sorry it wasn't Greninja, We Fit Trainer, Link, or other popular requests you guys have made, but I am working on other characters too, so stay tuned and I'll see you soon.